Another edition of Living the Dream Podcast. As always, thank you for subscribing, rate, review, all that good stuff. You know, I got to say that just to get out of the way because that's how the cool YouTubers say it. As always, you can find this episode on YouTube, also on iTunes and Spotify. So today's guest is interesting. I've known of him for a few years. I read a story a couple years ago. I think he was working at Bravo Network. And he left to start his own company. And when you see people's names in Hollywood, you're like, that's not too often. Uh, you're like, if it's a Spanish name, you're like, okay, cool. And then when they have a, an important role, you're like, okay, cool. So never met him, didn't know what's going on. And then I read a story in the LA Times a couple of weeks ago say that there's going to be a Selena series coming out. Now, if you're around my age, for in the 40s or in the 30s, you know, we've all quoted the anything for Selena's line, right? Or as, like I do, the Edward James Olmos line like her dad, we're not Mexican enough for the Mexicans, we're not American enough for the Americans. And when I was in Corpus Christi working a fight, we stayed by the Selena statue. First thing we did, before we had Whataburger, we went to the Selena statue, took a picture with it, and mind you, I only know... Like the song, I know the bitty bitty bomb, Coma La Flor, but you put that on at any party and all of a sudden everybody's jamming, right? It's like a cumbia, like, you know, uh, this cumbia, cumbia, all that other stuff, the tias are just working and jamming. But Selena had left an impact in her career to now where you're 20 something years later, she is still talked about. Uh, there's that new Netflix series coming out about Selena, and the man I'm bringing on today is Jaime Davila. Uh, or Davila. Yes. Uh, from Davila, yeah. Davila, get it right. Uh, from Campanario Productions, and Jaime is today's guest because he's the co-founder of Campanario and the president of the day-to-day operations. And when you want to talk about living the dream, he is living the dream. Not many people of Latino descent get to work in Hollywood, let alone be a person making decisions. And now he is running his own production company. And if that's not living the dream, I don't know what is. Uh, he is from the Valley, RGV, the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, he went to Harvard, Oxford, educated. So today's conversation, I'm really looking forward to it because he is a man that is forging his own way, leading the way, a trailblazer in many aspects. And now, obviously, the pinnacle of his career, he's on living the dream. Hi, man. How are you doing? <laughs> Thanks for coming on. And congratulations for being on living the dream. No, that that's honestly, thank you. You said it right, Beto. This is this is living the dream is being on living the dream. And uh, but no, thank you for that amazing intro. I need you to talk to all my friends and my parents. Uh, well, <laughs> so, let you me, know, t- let me take the people the behind the scenes here. I had to call <laughs> your people to get to you. So you got people. <laughs> Hey, look, I mean, I, I try, I think part of the Hollywood game is trying to make sure that uh, we do it right, right? And so I want to I wanna make sure that um, I work with Netflix and everything to make sure that we, we do everything correct. So yeah. Uh, but no, you reached out to me directly on Twitter first. Yeah. So don't, 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 don't get all like, you know, you DM me and I responded. That, that's exactly <laughs> it. You know how, so I talk to a lot of high school kids and I tell everybody, hey, whoever it is, reach out to them. Important people get 8 billion emails a day. Send them a message on Instagram or, or Twitter. You never know they might respond. You immediately respond. You said, I love to do it. And then you gave me the, can you contact my people? And I was like, ah, <laughs> here we go. No, but I was like, <laughs> I just, it has to go that way. But no, I like, get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but no, I think, yeah, I, I, that's great advice to give everyone. I think always, yeah, I'm, you know, I don't use social media as much as I should probably. But um, yes, reach out to me uh, either through my website or whatever. Reach out to me because I think that's the only way that we all, uh, improve and get more knowledge and take over Hollywood uh, is if we're all willing to sort of take a hand and sort of help each other out. So yeah, definitely reach out. And so yeah, when you reach out to me, uh, I definitely respond. And that's advice I give to people all, all the time. It's, hey, if you go to a panel and someone's talking, reach out to them. You know, it's don't be embarrassed. Closed mouths don't get fed, I've always said. <laughs> now, let me, before we get on to everything else in your background, uh, you are the executive producer of the new Selena series that's on Netflix. What can you tell us about that? Well, I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm, so I'm one of the. I'm you know I run Campanario Entertainment, which is the production company behind uh, Selena, Selena the series, and super excited about it. Um, you know, it's a sto- It's a show that really gets behind the legend, right? So exactly what you said. I think we all know about Selena or Selena the movie. This show is completely different. It really gives you a great glimpse. Uh, into what it took to make uh, the legend of Selena. And so we really get to meet her family, spend time with them, see how hard it was to become 
uh, you know, the talent that she was, um, how she had to learn Spanish, how she had to travel uh, miles and miles every weekend while juggling school all across the country in Mexico to perform. Um, you know, what it takes to actually make your dream come true is a lot, a lot of hard work. So I think, you know, when you have a podcast like Living the Dream, you know, the Quintanillas lived the dream and they got there by working super hard and loving each other and being there for each other. And I think that's really what I'm most excited about to showcase for this show, right? Like when we talk about living the dream, it's a lot of people that are behind the scenes that allow people to live their dreams. And uh, that's really what I'm excited about for the show. And it's how many episodes are out there? It's a whole season series? So yeah, so December 4th, everyone check it out. There'll be nine episodes uh, premiering and uh, we just wrapped uh, production completely. Um, and so yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, it's a two part series that we're really excited about uh, everyone um, enjoying. So you, we can binge that right after Thanksgiving, no problem. Yeah, so you can binge it December right. 4th, you can binge the first nine episodes, and then you know the rest of the series will come out at some point uh, to be determined, not by me, by Netflix, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. You're from the Valley, but obviously this meant more to you. Obviously, Selena, there's a, I think Patty Rodriguez has little libros out there. You have, uh, yes. Mac has their makeup with uh, Selena. My, my nieces, the little ones, have that stuff. What is it about her that still has the appeal 20 something years later? Well, I think it's a combination of things. I think you said it really well there, like your intro, and I would just add to your intro there. You know, when we talk about Selena, we're talking about someone who Beyonce credits as a major inspiration. We're talking about someone who Renee Zellweger th thanked in her Oscar speech uh, last year when she was accepting for Judy. Right? Like, we're talking about a huge American icon. And I, so I think one of the reasons why she was so inspirational and still to this day is that she was such a trailblazer. You know, she was one of the first people to start a fashion line, um, to really, you know, create her own boutique. You know, a lot of the stuff that we think, you know, a lot of these pop stars do right now, which is have businesses on, you know, that sort of become uh, a part of their brand. Selena was a, a trailblazer in that, a really, really big part of it. Um, and so I think that's a really, I think a big reason why she's still so inspiring is because she she was so amazing back then and then on top of it as you said earlier her music is just awesome like so you know how can you just not dance and jam to these amazing songs right and so i think you know the songs you mentioned are amazing and i think what's also exciting about part one is that you're going to hear a lot of the songs from the early catalog that are also incredible so i'm excited for people to add more even more you know, obviously hardcore selena fans know these songs but you know uh, maybe for people like you who don't know those selena songs yeah. there's so many many great ones um, so yeah, I think, you know, so she was an inspiration then continues to be, you know, she was everything to the Mexican American community and still is, but I would say she's even bigger to the American community writ large. Again, I think she's an American icon. And I think that's really what I'm hoping this series is one part of doing, you know, sort of putting her in that context. Why did you do this? Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up watching American and Mexican TV, right? So I was the kid who was watching like Seinfeld and Friends, but then also watching novelas on Univision. Yeah, so exactly. you know, my, my experience, right? Yeah, my experience growing up was like, I watched it all. And so, you know, I did grow up watching myself on screen via Univision, right? Like seeing, you know, Latino doctors or lawyers or, you know, empresarios, businessmen, um, but I would never saw that on American TV. And, you know, a big part of me growing up was just wanting to see, you know, my family from the Rio Grande Valley on screen, right? Like seeing my uncle, seeing my dad, seeing my mom, seeing, you know, these amazing, um, funny, hilarious, smart, um, nuanced people that you just don't see on screen, right? And I think that goes same, not just for obviously Tecanos and, you know, South Texans from the RGV, but, you know, for Chicanos in Los Angeles, for the community, Mexican American community in uh, Chicago. I mean, we just, we don't, we don't really see ourselves. And so, you know, a big part of why I wanted to start my company in the first place was I wanted to develop and create more stories about people that look like me, that came from where I came from, um, that sort of showcased a different side of my, you know, that part of my identity. And so, um, you know, when I first worked at Hollywood, honestly, I think a big part of my original goal was like, oh, I want to run a network one day, you know? And um, so, you know, I worked, uh, did the, I worked at an agency, uh, I then worked at another production company, a British company, um, and then I worked at Bravo for multiple years where I was an executive creating a bunch of shows with them, 
uh, developing a bunch of shows, having so much fun, right? So I was there at Bravo when we were creating, you know, Below Deck, Shaws of Sunset, Vanderpump oh, Rules, like a really, really, the good a stuff. really fun time. The good yeah, stuff. Like a really, really fun hey, time. Vanderpump was, Rules. Was right. Oh man, yeah. Vanderpump Rules. No, it was yeah. a, Vanderpump was so much fun to develop, right? Because you made that. I, I helped develop it. No, I'm not going to get credit for that. That's no, no. Uh, on this yeah, show, yeah. we take everybody's credit. <laughs> if you no, do, if you're I a was... part of it, okay, you don't do it, but I'll say it. he created Vanderpump Rules. No. He, no, no, you don't. Just, just shh, <laughs> let me say it for you. I'll take the liberties because it's Hollywood. Yeah, Everybody right, takes right. liberties, right? I know. I'm just. I'm not that guy. But I, I appreciate that. That's up. I am I the just, hype man. I am the hype guy for no, you. No, you're man. so good. This is why I'm like. I need you to. You know, can you like be, give me affirmations every morning? Like, I oh yeah, you, man. But, uh, got you. Um, but yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, I was amazing. Part of this amazing team there, and so I think I learned so much about storytelling and producing and how to create content. And honestly, I just. I, Bravo gave me so much opportunity to develop a lot of Latino, Latinx, Mexican American shows, right? Uh, ultimately, none of them went to series, but there were some amazing shows that I got to develop. And ultimately, I just think part of the process when I was working there was I wasn't being pitched by a lot of people that looked like me or thought like me. Mm. Um, and so I had this amazing opportunity uh, to create my own company, uh, you know, with my dad, who's the other co-founder. Uh, and my dad used to work at uh, Televisa and Univision and was part of, part of the team that brought Univision to the United States. Um, and so a big part of, you know, our desire was how do we just create amazing top quality programming that features people that look like us, starring people that look like us, uh, written by people that look like us. Mm -hmm. And so that's really why we started the company. Um, and obviously, you know, Selena is the biggest, um, icon for our community. Um, and so I, I really wanted, and I, to me, she was still so resonant, right? I think in this moment where there's so many stories from the eighties and nineties, you know, like straight out of Compton or even the OJ, uh, FX series, you know, I hadn't seen anything that was nostalgic about Mexican Americans, uh, and our experience growing up in, you know, the United mm -hmm, States. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on top of it, everything else, I just thought, you know, what an amazing story that is still so resonant today when we're talking about race, gender, class, these are all things that the Catania has dealt with um, in the 80s and 90s. Um, and so it was very exciting, you know, to ultimately get this going and be able to, you know, uh, start this project, right? And so again, you know, I'm, uh, thank you for, you know, saying take all the credit, but I really don't. And I, I and that's a big part of who I am. I, I, I'm I one person that, you know, I, I run the company that sort of produced Capanario, but there were so many other people that made this happen. Obviously, you know, Moises Zamora and all the writers who wrote incredible scripts, uh, Rico Martinez, who's my partner at uh, Campanari, who's my EVP of content, uh, who's my partner on this project. He worked so hard. Hiro Kamata and Katina Mora, who were our directors on the project, were amazing. So, yeah, I just think I I'm very, very excited about the project. And I think all of us came into it with a love for Selena, a love for uh, Mexican, Mexican-American culture, Latino culture, and just really wanting to make sure that we took this opportunity to highlight how kick ass we are you know that's uh that's awesome the way you just explain it, explain it and you can hear your excitement in your voice you've been involved in a lot of other stuff and I, I i joke with the others take the credit but when you're working on a project <laughs> like this where it involves uh latinos we all got to share it because we exactly like before we even get into your background or anything else we we've both been subject to that crabs in the bucket mentality of mm -hmm. you know oh you think you're all bad or you can't do this you're i can't do that or or Wherever you're working, you might be the only brown person in the room. Mm -hmm. And I'm sometimes I'm like, dude, I'm not even that dark. Like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, hey. yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Yeah. It's like, how do you, how, how did you learn Spanish? I'm like, geez. Okay. Or my favorite one was like, <laughs> how did you survive the gangs? I'm like, cause I'm more scared of my mom than the, the Cholos. It's real simple. Uh, but this project before we move on, you just mentioned a lot of names that have a Spanish surname. Mm -hmm. How important was it for you to have that involved? Because a lot of times stories are told, but from people who don't quite understand the culture. Somebody might be in that room who doesn't understand that uh, Texan is different from an L.A. person mm -hmm. when it comes to being Mexican. No, That 100%. must have been huge for you. And it was a really big, important thing about the project, right? It was really, really important for us at Campanario. And I would also say Netflix. Netflix has been a great partner to make sure that, you know, we to are able to tell our stories, you know? And I think when you are allowed to be super specific, I think that's when it becomes universal, right? 
I'm getting, you know, everyone right now is obsessed with the Queen's Gambit, you know, a show about this British girl playing chess and everyone's like, oh my God, I, I, I love it. And that's like, Dude, yeah, I, I, I looked at it for five minutes. But, I'm like, I ain't watching this. Like, <laughs> no, but look, I think, you know, but I think, I, you know, you look at a show like that working and you're like, yeah, because it got super specific. It got really into yeah. it and explained this world and showed you how this world is unique and special. But in doing so, you are also able to see how it relates to your own world, right? You, you, you as your, when you're an audience watching it, you make your own connections, right? Okay. And so I'm really excited for that exact thing where it's, it's really important for us to be able to tell our own stories because when we tell our stories and we tell them specifically, I think that's when they become universal. And so it was really important for the directors, for all the production heads, for everyone to have um, this background. And again, it's sort of like, sure. look, I'm a company that believes in giving everyone opportunity. So I, I wouldn't, you know, not work with uh, white people, right? But no, of course, um, of course. I think, exactly. Yeah, you know, but I think on this one, it was very important for us to, you know, um, be able to get that opportunity. And it was really great to have the partner in Netflix that was like, yes, go for it. You guys do it. You know, we want a Mexican American uh, from Texas to produce this. We want, uh, Mexican American to write this, and the team of not just Mexican Americans but also all types of Latinos to write this. You know, yeah. it, it's that's that's really special and rare to find. So I want to give you know, um, obviously that's my company's mission, but I want to give Netflix the credit for believing in it and and going for it. At the end of the day, like we're not getting into this like Latino Power Hour or anything like that, it's, <laughs> but it's more of you. There are a lot of talented people that you work with that you know that you've worked with over the years that haven't been given the opportunity. And I, exactly. I know that as a person who has his own company, I know your mantra is probably, I'm going to hire the best who happen to be Latino. You're not going to hire yes. somebody who's Mexican just because. It's like, no, because if they fail, then you fail. And then Netflix ain't calling you again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, by the way, 100%. And 100, you know, I think that's the, the big, I mean, I think I just grew up, you know, I grew up in the South Texas where, you know, all my un uncles were professors, um, you know, my aunt Nora ran the most incredible business in South Texas. Um, and so for me, I just, I've been, I've been surrounded by talent my entire life, right. Yeah. And sort of entrepreneurship and going for it and living out your dreams. And so, you know, when people are always like, well, how are we going to staff this with all Latinos or in Hollywood? How are we going to find the talent? I'm like, of course, <laughs> like, and I get it, but I get it. Right. Like these yeah. people just don't know. Like, they're, they're coming from a place of, I don't know. And, you know, a lot of what I, you know, I often say that I speak, I speak English, Spanish, and Hollywood because I try to just be, you know, I try to be that voice. I still right? get that. I try, to, I try to be that voice of like, hey, I know you don't get it, but I get it. And let me be that bridge and let my company be that bridge so that we can do it together. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think, look, I'm not saying that my company has it all figured out, but like everything we're going to make is going to be a huge hit. And like every Latino is going to watch it. Or I mean, that's not, but what I am saying is like everything we produce is going to be of high quality of great, uh, it's saying something, it's impactful because of who you're seeing on screen. And I think if we do all of these step-by-step, -step, just make more projects, do them with this care, work on them super hard, you know, eventually we'll make a change. And so look, I'm with you. I, I think my biggest thing is I'm always like, it's so slow and, and yeah, it is, right? I'm not gonna disagree, but I also look at all the amazing things we have going for us yeah. now, right? Like, you know, this year, the biggest streaming hit, um, you know, before Selena, the series, uh, was uh, was Hamilton on Disney Plus, and that's a La Latino Latinx show right there. You know, created by Lin Manuel Miranda, starring a bunch of Latinos. Um, I know it's not technically about a Latino, but I'm gonna say that's a Latinx show, and that's a Latino show because Heck it's yeah, yeah, right. Claim you know, and I think that's exactly, and I think that's you know what you said earlier. It's sort of like we, this is our culture, our community. We are part of the mainstream. We create amazing things. Yeah. You know. Station 19 with uh, is starring a Latina like that. You know, I claim that like that's that's what I'm saying. And so I think part of what we're doing right now in Hollywood is creating our own shows, you know, for us, by us, which is amazing. And then on top of it, we're getting to, you know, sort of take over a lot of other shows. Right. And sort of claim them in other ways, too. So I'm really excited that to get, I get to be a, a small part of what's a really larger revolution taking place in Hollywood in terms of amazing Latino talent, showrunners, uh, directors. So yeah, I, I'm I'm very fortunate. You also produced a show called Camilla La Tejana. Yes. If, I mean, you you don't have to be hardcore Mexican. You could be a little bit of Mexican American, and you just know Camilla La Tejana, Tigres del Norte, Tigers of the North coming out there. So exactly, that right there, 100%. those little details where you explain to somebody, and it's like that's based off of a song. And Tigres del Norte, who have their discography at UCLA, they've saved so many. Uh, 
classic uh, Mexican songs, oh, yeah. and they've donated millions at UCLA. So it's it's cool what you're doing with your company, and you're barely starting, and you're getting on your way. All right, now it's called Living the Dream with Hyman. Let's get into your story here. And Hyman, <laughs> real right, quick, right. you do me a favor when you speak, uh, move your uh, the microphone because it's rubbing against your shirt. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're you're good. Uh, the, okay, the microphone part. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, because I know there's is. people listening right now. They're like, "What is that noise?" It's his microphone. Okay, it's not yeah. me. Um, it's my uh, shirt. Sorry. Yeah, yes. yeah no. Yeah. So, you uh, grew up in the in the valley. Mm -hmm. What did you want to do when you were a little kid? Obviously, you said your dad's in uh, in, in worked for Televisa Univision, but what did you want to do? Yeah, honestly, I I was that kid that grew up in Texas, and then I moved to New York City when I was about ten years old. And so I just knew I loved TV and movies, like obsessed with them in a way that was like probably not great. Like I was the kid doing homework in front of, you know, the TV. I mean, it worked out for me, I guess, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want my kids to do it, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, um, but uh, I, I was very loved entertainment. So I think I just, I knew I wanted to be a part of it, right? And I think slowly but surely upon my journey was realizing like what part of it, right? So I think very early on, I was like, do I want to be an actor? And I remember, you know, uh, hating being on stage and performing. And, uh, you know, the two times I remember I was once uh, on a, I did a solo performance in early grade school and like literally like the lyrics just like blacked out. Like I just did not remember them. Um, and so, you know, for 30 seconds there was silence when there should have been singing. And I realized at that moment, you know what, maybe not acting is not right. And uh, so I think you know, I was always just trying to figure out what it was. And honestly, I would also say like in high school and college, I got really into academia. So I actually got really into academics and social anthropology and the study of, of Mexican American culture, Mexican culture, Mexican history. Um, and so in college, you know, I think I was still obsessed with entertainment, but in college I sort of was moving towards more thinking, oh, should I become a professor? Because I already, like, I had the beard already, yeah. so I was really just like a short. I was a shoulder patch away from, uh, you know, and a PhD away from a professorship. So I was like, let me do that. So that's why I went to grad school. So I went to grad school to study uh, Mexican American, Latin American studies, and I got my master's in that, which was really amazing and great. Worked with Alan Knight, who is one of the eminent scholars in the Mexican Revolution, um, and so you know, really, just I'm a nerd. Really, I'm a geek. I love reading <laughs> and love stuff and. But, you know, when I was going through grad school, I realized also, you know what, this, this, this didn't feel right. Like, it didn't feel like I loved it, but it didn't feel like 100% right for what I wanted. Um, and, you know, this thing, a bunch of my friends had moved out to Los Angeles to become writers and actors. Um, and so I thought, well, why don't I see what L.A. is like? I've never lived there. I'd only lived here a few years when I was about five years old. Um, I lived, uh, my family and I lived here. Uh, but honestly, didn't have much experience with L.A. And at that moment in my life, um, I had really considered myself both a Texan and a New Yorker. Um, and so a big part of me was like, I want to you know, stay my whole life in New York. Um, but I was like, you know what? My friends are going out there. Let me try L.A. because I know I want to work in entertainment, but I'm not sure how that works. And my dad had worked on an Univision. And um, I think for me, a big part of what I wanted was to sort of for a big part of it was at the beginning to, to pave my own way, sort of like do my own thing and sort of try it. And then also to sort of work in American TV um, and sort of see how that worked. Because I did have a lot of more experience growing up with uh, Univision and Mexican TV. You know, I grew up, my dad would get ratings on the fax machine and we would highlight them together, trying to figure out what was working, what wasn't. Oh. Um, so, you know, from my viewpoint, um, it was a really cool thing to move to LA and try it. And so, you know, I also, you know, tried the writing thing very early on, realized not a writer um, <laughs> and, um, you know, went to. So I got my first job at an agency at ICM. And so I worked in the mailroom and then eventually worked my way up to uh, an agent on the unscripted side of the business. So the reality side of the business. Um, and I actually love that because I'm also a big unscripted fan. I love reality TV. Um, you know, I think the best reality TV shows are like the best scripted shows. They give you amazing characters. And then oftentimes you see that character have to make a choice, right? So either in a Real Housewives, you have to see them like the worst version is like, did they invite that person to their party, right? That's a choice. Or on Survivor, it's who do they vote off, right? You're constantly asking incredibly nuanced people to make choices. And so um, I really fell in love with the business side of the business and didn't really understand how that, where I fit in, right? Because, um, you know, that could be sort of as a buyer or it could be as a producer. 
So after ICM, I worked on the production side. I went to work at ITV Studios, which is a production company based in the UK that has offices all around the world. Um, and then LA was sort of, you know, th their biggest show at the time was Kitchen Nightmares, uh, which was super fun. Uh, the Gordon Ramsay? The Gordon Ramsay show. So I got to eat Where there, he was like, just yelling at everybody, right? Yeah, and it was great. I mean, it was okay. super fun to be part of that, to go and eat on that show because you're, you're eating on a set. It's not a real restaurant, so it's a set. And, um, you know, the bathrooms are like outside in porta potty So it's like, I just, I, that was also just a great experience because it's, you know, you see the, you get to participate in the making of reality TV and also you get to see the behind the scenes and, you know, the waiters are actually all producers, you know, taking notes for, oh. for you know. Um, and so... Uh, worked at ITV for a while, and then a job opportunity at Bravo worked out, uh, opened up, and so I really, I'd, I had loved Bravo growing up, had been a big fan of Queer Eye for the straight guy. Um, I was uh, uh, the straight guy in high school who didn't know really how to dress or anything, so when Queer Eye came out, it was awesome. I was starting to wear it like it's sharper J Crew sweaters. I felt so cool, so I was hey, like, that's great. No lie, no lie. Yeah. When that show came out, um, I started taking tips from them because, oh yeah so my sister gloria she's an interior designer and before that she was working at men's warehouse so when okay. i started doing local tv she would dress me right but i was like gloria i want a little bit more flair a little more pop that show comes out i'm like that's why i wear pinks and pastels and everybody's yeah. like, people are like damn you're wearing that color i was like heck yeah it looks good oh the pocket square is a must yeah. it's that's a must I, got it. I mean i got that from them and like they give me so many tips that i still use and it was just like a great, so I just, I love the brand. It was such a yeah. fun brand that was like, hey, how do we create just like fun, over the top characters oh, in yeah. worlds that you often don't see, like fashion, design, you know, which are important. I, you know, I, I, I'm a creative guy, so I love being surrounded by art and beautiful things and all that type of stuff. So it's a big part of, I think it's important, right? You know, yeah. what you surround yourself, like your office right now behind you, that was so cool, right? And so yeah, t-shirts. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you go in that space and you feel, you like, you, you yeah. get a feeling, right? Good, so I yeah. think, you know, all that stuff. So, so yeah, I, a job opened up at Bravo and it was awesome. And I, I loved working at Bravo. The, the team at Bravo was amazing. What right? did you do so, at Bravo? What was the job? So, so my job, I worked on the development side. So my job was basically at the very early part was, you know, helping to coordinate, you know, the development department, right? Basically like, helping make sure all the meetings were on time, you know, scheduling, all that stuff, and then eventually moved up to become a development executive. So I was creating ideas for them. So a bunch of my ideas, uh, you know, some of them went to series. Like I created a show called uh, Extreme Guide to Parenting, you know, which was a one season show. Um, uh, created a bunch of other sort of adapted a bunch of other formats. And then on top of it was really excited to be part of, you know, the Below the Deck team, Vanderpump Rules team, Shots of Sunset Wait, Below team. the Deck, was that the, uh, the... Below Deck, Below Deck, sorry. Is that Did where they, the uh, deck, yeah. they have like... Famous people come on as on a cruise ship or on a ship on a yeah, yacht, it's, right? It's, it's a yacht, and it's not really famous people. It's just like rich people, and oh, really? you you come, and so it's sort of like a, a Downton Abbey meets the yacht world. It's sort of how we and were thinking the, about and it's it. And the staff, it. right? It's the staff. You follow mostly the staff, and that's who you follow. Those are the characters for the whole show. I actually, just watched episode, one recently because it's so such a great show. For for boxing, we get put into a, it's called the bubble. So if the fight's yeah. on Friday, we have to check in on Tuesday, get tested, and you can't leave your room for like forty eight hours. So you and that's why I love hotels. I they're watching all this TV, and it was there on because Johnny Damon, the b former baseball player, was on, and they're like, oh, in there Saint, you go. They were in Saint Tropez or something like that, and yes, I'm like, exactly. The crew is like, you have a hot British guy and an Australian girl, and like the drama if they're hooking up or not, but they hook up with the other person. Yeah, I, I tell you, I love all that. Show. Like, that's that's the stuff. Like I don't watch no, sports. That was, that was, I watch that. that. <laughs> No, by the way, this is what I talked about my friends who love sports. It's like sports is also great soap operas, right? It's oh, like, yeah. oh, you know, it's and so Below Deck was a really fun show to develop. And I think one, I think what was great at Bravo, what I learned at Bravo was, you know, because at that time too, like, you know, my boss's boss was Andy Cohen, and he had a show on oh. TV. You know, watch what happens. And so you're going to meet this guy who's a TV star and who's also, you know, your boss, and you you assume things about him, right? He's probably going to be really, you know, strict or like mean or like. And he's the nicest guy in the world. And then Francis Barrick, who was the president, who now sort of is you know, co-running um, NBC Universal with Susan Rovner, she was also the most amazing, incredibly nice person in the world, right? So, and my direct boss, Eli Lair, who now runs History Channel, was the most amazing guy. So I, I, I learned that, like, you know, you don't have to work in Hollywood and be a jerk. You can be <laughs> great. And, um, and on top of it, you can really, you know, it was fun to think about where you can take a brand, right? Like, what 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 does Bravo mean? And it means a lot of things to different people, right? And so, then how do you sort of take that further and create new fun things? Still speaking to that old audience, creating new new audiences. Um, 
And so I just, you know, a big part of that experience was just so amazing. But I, I will say that, like, you know, I ultimately realized I wasn't being pitched to by a lot of people that looked like me or had my names or, and, you know, my, my dad had this goal of, like, well, why don't we start something? Why don't we create a company that um, changes that, right? That sort of starts creating and create great content, not just for Mexico and the Latin American market in Spanish language, like create high quality stuff. So Camelia Tejana was our first series. And that was shot with Alexa cameras, with movie directors, you know, really trying to elevate what, you know, a Mexican novella can be. And we had really fun success with that. Um, and then on top of that, how do we push the American market to create more shows that are starring Mexican Americans, Cuban Americans, Colombian Americans that feature us as we are, right? As already part of the American mainstream and fabric, right? That we are as nuanced and that some of us are, you know, recently immigrated. Some of us have been here for five generations. Yeah. Some of us don't speak Spanish, right? And I think that that was a big part of, you know, my dad wanting to create this company and I really believed in the mission. And I think a big, I was saying no for a long time because honestly I was like, ah, like, do I work with my dad? Um, but I think ultimately I just realized, you know, it's like if anyone else came to me with this opportunity and said, let's start a company together that will hopefully change how people, what people think about Latinos, Latinx, Mexican Americans, I would do it in a heartbeat. So, you know, ultimately I, my dad and I said like, let's, let's do it. And, you know, I left Bravo in end of 2013 um, and, you know, hit the ground running in 2014. Um, and it's been really exciting. It's been really exciting to, you know, at Campanario, it's, it's me and then I have a team of uh, six people uh, who are amazing. That's um, it? All Latinos. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a lean and mean fighting machine. Yeah, wow. I, I, you know, I, I tell people it's like, you know, we're not, our competitors are people who have, you know, overhead of, 50, 100 people, right? And so we, we're, we work really hard and efficiently and lean and mean to get stuff done. And obviously, you know, when you have a show like Selena, that becomes, you know, like a 400, 500 person crew. Yeah. But uh, as far yeah, as the people, so yeah. let, let me, uh, before, for the people who are listening who don't know much about Hollywood, myself included, I just know. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was perfectly fine because you, you explained it. It's take me back a little bit. You say your company only has six people, right? So you are yeah. a production company, which means you guys make the shows and then yep. you sell it to Netflix or Amazon or Hulu, whatever, correct? Something like well, that? Well, it depends. So yeah, so, so, so there depends, right? So there's different business models. So um, on uh, you know, production companies, most of the time now, there are a lot of production companies who will sort of self-finance, create shows, and then sort of sell them once they're finished to networks. Um, uh, you know, like uh, Sony's will do that. Um, there's other studios that will do that. Most of the time, though, what will happen is um, a production company will work hand in hand with a, a buyer, a network, a streamer, okay. or a studio uh, to together create um, the product. So this was right? a joint with Netflix, Selena? So Campanario produced, Campanario produced Selena. We did it ourselves. You know, Netflix is, you know, uh, our partner. But you know, Campanario, we 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 handled all of it. You know, no when we're talking way. about so yeah, you guys like just we, we, you guys bet on yourselves that somebody's gonna get this. Yeah, and and I think more than anything, look, I mean, I think wow. what was so so important though was also building a team, right? Again, so it's yeah. not just me. You know, we I worked with you know Rico Martinez, who I mentioned earlier, had amazing experience working on the real world, real rules, and them all. And you know, we I shared him with him his vision. He believed in it. You know, Sergio Aguero. Uh, who worked on, who was an EP on Itumama Tamien, worked a big side on the Endeavor International side and was a big sort of uh, early side, you know, sort of speaking for um, this Latino identity. You know, he had a very similar vision. We joined forces. He's part of the company. You know, Deanna Mia Jones, uh, who runs our Spanish side, you know, had 25, you know, 20 years plus working in so Spanish every, language So everybody's media. buying in, right? Like, like this is this is interesting right now for anybody who is in film school, wherever you're at, and paying hundreds of thousand dollars, you're learning more right now in this of how Hollywood works than you would be as you're getting this in your MFA. But that's the thing is because there's probably some kids that's listening who's like, I want to get into Hollywood, but I was like, I tell everybody, whatever business you want to get into, whatever job you want, Find out who's doing that job and know everything about that job. Don't say, oh, I want to run a studio and be like, you don't know what the mailroom is because everybody starts in the mailroom. It's like, I have exactly. a grasp of what's my, going on. Exactly. And that's my, I think that's exactly right, Beto. That's the best piece of advice you could give anyone because you want to, to learn any business, you want to get started at the bottom level and you want to see how it works because that's, when you're at the bottom, you really see how stuff gets made, honestly. Mm -hmm. And then as you move up, you sort of get more sort of like, um, 
But, you know, you learn about how stuff gets done. And I think it's really important to understand the business side of it and understand who are the players, right? Yeah. Right now, Hollywood is going through an incredible reorganization, right? You know, so when I moved to Hollywood, Netflix was not making TV shows. Netflix was still a DVD company, right? When I moved to Hollywood- That's right, you used to have to mill dream, them back. You know, the dream, the dream was to get a show on NBC, one show, and that was gonna be, you were gonna be set for life, right? Because it was gonna air in 100 countries and it was gonna air on TBS late at night for, you know, if you got 100 episodes, right? That was not that long ago that that was what Hollywood was. And now look at where Hollywood is, right? Hollywood now is all, they're all direct to consumer, all going to their streamers. Netflix just had a major reorganization. Disney announced a major reorganization that's not done yet. They're still announcing some changes on their TV side. Um, NBC Universal and Comcast just announced a major reorganization on how they, uh, you know, create and then distribute that content. So, you know, what I would say to everyone right now who's sort of starting out or whatever, you know, like, no, I would say, I know some things. I also know that, like, no one knows anything. Hollywood is changing so much. <laughs> And it's changing so quickly and it's changing so rapidly. No kidding. And so my advice to everyone right now is sort of like, you know, just be open to that. Be open to any job. Say yes to anything. Because honestly, you don't know what's going to work, right? You know, mm -hmm. I have friends. I have a friend who, um, you know, uh, as an intern worked for this, you know, young guy who wasn't that big, who then was given the job to, you know, oh, can you make this Lego franchise work? And they took a chance on this guy and you know, he was the intern then. Um, and obviously the Lego movie became a big hit and you know, he's a 30 year old today and, uh, you know, uh, he's a white guy. I still like him, uh, <laughs> you know, but, he's, but, he's, uh, but he's running, you know, that company. And I think that's, you know, what we're talking about is like, there are no rules, right? Yeah. When I first started in Hollywood, it was like, you know, work in the mail room. And then you still, I still, I still say to people to do that, like work at the agency side or work on the management side, because you really are at the nexus of everything in Hollywood and you get to understand how things actually work and who matters and who doesn't. And, Honestly, you know, it's like, that's the sad part about Hollywood. It's, you know, who has juice, who doesn't, it, it matters. But right? that's every it's, business it's, though. It's, 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 yeah, that's, it's like everything. That's life. It's what connections you got, where are you going to do? Like it, uh, when I speak to college, I was like, tell them, what internship have you done? What have you done? Like if I go look at your Twitter right now, can I tell that you want to be a sports reporter, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever it is you want to do, or are you too busy like retweeting stupid lyrics about something that doesn't affect you being all emo? It's like your brand could be cultivated right now with whatever it is you want to do. As I tell them, like you can't, you don't have to wait till you graduate. You you could do it. Heck, I didn't even graduate and I'm doing this business. So, and look, and by the way, what you just said earlier was so cool. It's like that, you know, with the pandemic, you learned how to create, you know, these web, these new sort of thing. And I think. You know, right now on our phones, we can all make TV shows. Like, yeah. Again, that was not something you and I had growing up. We so, had it you know, two years I ago. think that's, you know, <laughs> like, it, it's just like the, the future is so, so I really, you know, I tell young people, it's like, look, I have advice. I have my path, right? I'm definitely living a dream. But like, I think the only lessons I can give to you are sort of like, say yes to every job, right? Like, I, I remember when I was working on reality TV, people were like, why are you doing that? Like, reality TV is so, you know, and I'm like, because it's amazing storytelling and I'm learning a lot, right? Like, you know, sometimes it's great when you can write shows and you can script it and you can do different takes. On the unscripted side, what you get is what you get and you better make it work. And so it's a lot of work for pre-production. It's a lot of work in production. It's a lot of work in the edit. So, you know, I, I, I think that these are all things where I just give, tell people, I give the advice of like, just say yes to everything. You don't know where it's going to lead. No one knows what the future of Hollywood is. Who's going to be running Hollywood? Who knows? But just work super hard, work at different things. You're going to meet a ton of people who are then going to help you, uh, you know, produce your stuff when you can and just keep working hard and hard, right? Like, you know, when we talk about Hollywood and when we talk about this stuff, we're talking about like you're asking people, you know, to give you millions of dollars to make your dream come true, right? And so I often tell people, it's like, you got to you gotta work for that. It's not going to be just sort of like, oh, yeah, here's, here's $10 million, go make your movie. It's like, well, why you? Why not someone else, right? And I think that's the thing. It's like, you know, we have an amazing, rich talent in the Latino community, in the Latinx community. Um, and so I'm excited. And right now I, I see it all the time. I see so many young filmmakers. So it's, it's happening. So, yeah. you know, it's just the revolution is at hand. And I, I, again, I'm excited to be one small part. Of it. It's also part of knowing how to play the game. It's you can't blame, oh, I didn't get an opportunity because of this. I didn't get this job because of this. No, maybe your script sucked. Maybe your animation <laughs> sucked. Maybe or, you were just an asshole when you showed up to your meeting. Like, part of it or then or by the way and then maybe there are that systemic stuff that is holding it but it's like either way it was a no how do you get to a yes right but, like 
if what, somebody tells you, know, you, you, okay, you would say no. How many times have you been told no? Millions of times. Oh, and yeah, you find somebody else. You're pitching Selena everywhere probably. And it's like, who, what, no, here, there. And yeah. but you believe in your product. You believe in yourself. Let me go back to the Selena part. You, How long did this project, how long ago did this project start? So we sold this to Netflix in uh, the summer of 2018. So and before that, you were pitching so, and it and before to that, well, we were working, yeah, so we were working with the Continuous for a while because we, you know, we eventually, you know, we had another project with them that ultimately sold to ABC that didn't move forward a series that was inspired by, you know, the Selena legacy. So we were working with them a few times, uh, for a few years. But yeah, I'll be honest with you, you know, when we had the Selena story, a lot of people always say like, oh, how, that must have been so obvious. Like everyone, like Selena. And I'm like, no, it was not obvious. A lot of people... <laughs> Do not, a lot of people see Selena and be like, oh, like you mean like the Mexican girl who only spoke Spanish? And I'm like, no, like she was born in Corpus Christi. She was an American. And by the way, and it's just like, and I, you yep. know, a lot of people, and so I look at that stuff and I'm like, man, like what an opportunity, right? So it, that stinks, right? It stinks that people don't know about us, right? But mm -hmm. I also view that as an opportunity. And so I say like, well, look, you know, maybe you as a buyer don't know who she is or don't know the potential impact, but someone will. And how do I best translate that? How do I best sell that, right? And, you know, luckily Netflix had an amazing team that got it right away, right? That understood yeah. both the impact, understood what she represented to our community, understood what the story could be for a modern audience. Um, and so, yeah, it wasn't, I mean, it was not like, oh, got it, and it was super easy. No, there, it was It's. It was hard. It was hard to sell You this. just need that one it. person, that one person to say yes. That's all you need. And then from there, you hit the ground running. So you're trying to pitch the Selena story. You're telling your team, hey, we're going to do this. Hey, we're going to do this. Three years later down the road, it was like, okay, finally we do it. And how do you stay motivated in that part of, you mentioned it, you're only six people in your company. You, your dad, and talented people around you. But at the same time, it's like, hey, we're working on this. Uh, we don't know where the money's coming from yet, guys. <laughs> um, because you could have stayed at Bravo and moved up the line and made more money, the job security, the, the stocks, all that other stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you bet on yourself. Why? Uh, I don't, honestly, <laughs> uh, that's a great question. I honestly, I bet on myself because I don't know. I think when I worked in Hollywood, look, I, I've been very fortunate in my life to be in surrounded by quote unquote elites, right? So I, I was very lucky to go to Harvard College. I was very lucky to go to Oxford University, and I was very lucky to work in Hollywood. No, and you weren't really lucky, think, man. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna cut you off there. Let me be your hype guy here. Yeah. You weren't lucky. You worked your ass off for that. Like, oh, look, I worked really hard, but a lot of people work hard. Okay, right? okay, so but I, I okay, give okay. To, yeah. You, okay, and so you, you might have yeah. had some connections to help you get in the way. That's how life works. But you still had to yeah. do the work. You still had to write the papers. You still had to do the nights where you weren't sleeping, the nights where you were stressing, <laughs> all that stuff. You did all that. That's not luck. Team. Man, that's yeah. not luck. You no, earned just, it. Yeah, I was on the, I was on, thank you so much, Beth. You're again, you're you're my new future hype man. And I, again, like I was yeah, you're right. Like I, I did speech and I did debate tournaments every weekend. You know, I was not I was not hanging out with the cool kids. I was uh sleeping in basements in Massachusetts arguing about the constitution. So uh, you know, I, I definitely worked hard, but again, a lot of people do. So Yeah, but, you know, I, I yeah, was, but it's at the same time, it's you worked your ass off, you got the grades that you had to, you get at the test. Maybe somebody wrote you a great recommendation recommendation letter and you had connections. Great. Use your connections. You could have also been that kid that was just like, I right, equal the papi where he's not doing anything and my dad will pay my way to get in. You could have done that. Oh, 100%. We don't. No, that, that's but never been, but yeah. that's not you. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's Love not it. luck, man. You made it happen for yourself. And you're doing Thank it right you. now yeah. to this day. And I don't even know I you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I appreciate that. Look, and I think a lot of like, because look, I think when you're surrounded by all these elites, you realize quickly early on, like, man, these people yeah. aren't that impressive. Like, honestly, like yep. they're super impressive people at Harvard. Don't get me wrong. Yes. Like, a lot of them, you're like, what? Like, that's it? And so same mm. in Hollywood. Like you get to meet these people and a lot of people who are super famous and you get to meet them and you're like, what? Like, mm -hmm. if you're doing it, man, I, I can do it. And so, look, I, I took a bet on myself and I had the resources to do it. And so that's what it was, right? I was very, again, very fortunate. And again, to your point, I am not... I am not someone who's resting on my laurels, right? Like I took a big chance, a big risk to my career, which was doing really well to start a company and say, I'm making a bet, not just on myself, but on my community. And so I'm really excited that it's, it's, it's paying off, right? That we get to launch a show like Selena. We're going to have a Mexican American family in almost 200 countries all over the world on December 4th, you know, launching day and date. And there's young girls in Japan who are going to see this and relate to Selena. 
there's going to be dads in Denmark who relate to the Abraham, right? And like, I think that's what's so cool about what I see as a vision, not just for my company, but for Hollywood writ large, right? Where it's like, there are amazing stories, not just about Mexican American community, about the Asian American community, about the black community. And there's so many amazing people out there who can tell these stories, give them the chance, give them the opportunity and they're going to, they're going to nail it. Right. And look, I'm not going to, I hope I nail it. Right. Well, we'll, the audience will decide and everyone else will decide, but we work so hard on this to create a really inspirational family drama, right? You know, something that you can see with all of your family and you can see yourselves, but then also still be inspired. Right. Like, and I think that's the key with so much of TV and the power of TV, right? Like when I was that young kid watching stuff, I was inspired every day mm -hmm. to uh, want to succeed and, and want to, you know, make a better life for myself and my family. And that's what I hope people get from Selena the series, right? Like what Selena the series hopefully shows you is that yes, they had talent. Obviously Selena is one in a million and, but they still work their butts off. Right. And so, yeah, to what you said earlier about it, you're right. Like, I, I'm, I have a lot of stuff going for me, but I work super hard. Everyone in my company works super hard, right? Like, we have, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to get to this point where you get to produce something like Selena the series for Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think when you have something like that opportunity and you have that chance, you have to recognize that it's like, with that privilege, what am I going to do with it, right? And, I'm going to showcase and tell Hollywood that our stuff can work. So hopefully Selena works. So hopefully, you know, all of your, your listeners watch it. Hopefully everyone around the world watches it because then I think then Hollywood, just like Coco before it, just like Hamilton yeah. is going to see that like, Hey, our stories resonate all over the world. They resonate with our community. They resonate with the white community. They resonate with the black community. They resonate with the international community. And we shouldn't make more of these stories because they're going to work. And it's great. And I think that's the thing too. Like, when we talk about why ratings are going down in TV or stuff like that, it's like, well, maybe it's because everyone looks the same on TV. Maybe it's just as simple as like, you know, making Empire was an incredible show, right? It was like Dallas before it. It was just an amazing soap opera that featured uh, African Americans and Afro Latinos in those roles, right? And I think when you see something like that working for the Mexican American community and the Black community, I look at that and I'm like, just make more of those. That's it. Make more shows. It's, it's make it. more shows that have that special that have you know featuring mexican americans being badasses <laughs> great you know be who we are butt. be who we be, are because that's who we are right like i think that's the thing it's like you see it too but like you're kicking butt you know all the friends that you have are, are kicking butt like in our communities like when i go to boyle heights everyone's kicking butt yeah. like during the pandemic latinos have kicked butt we're the ones working the front lines. Like, that's what we do <laughs> and so like when we get to that's what's that's what I'm excited about doing, like showcasing that story. And what's more American than that, right? When we're talking about the Latino experience, what's more American than working super hard to achieve your dreams, not giving up, and when someone tells you no, you figure out another way to make it happen. Yeah. Like that is how many times did our mom tell us no about anything? Mom, get us some oh, No. Get us no. Every, like mom, can I have another more another plate of food? No. <laughs> like when you when you exactly. go to the quinceanera, don't get up, don't ask for anything. If they offer you, say no. Right? It's just like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you go to a friend's house, you better order the cheapest thing on the menu if they take you out to dinner. Right. Meanwhile, it's like I go out with my friends and I'm like, oh, I'll treat tonight. They're like, oh, I'll get the lobster, and I'm like, what the. <laughs> Who taught you? It's yeah. like being a Mexican American household that you would just be ordering one appetizer and you would share it. Yeah. First of all, the fact that you went to dinner, look at you, all big time. Yeah. See, that, that, that right there, I'll say is lucky. The fact that you went to dinner, that's lucky. Well, right also, there. I, remember, I was like, well, going to dinner in the Valley was all great because, you know, it, it was Olive Garden, it was Applebee's. Fancy. It was, I, you know, I, I, it was Fancy. yeah, exactly. I was like the best experience. Everyone talks about like, oh, what was it like going on McCallum? I was like, it was the best because every, you know, twice a month we got to go either to Red Lobster or Olive Garden Ooh. and it was a dream. You know, us, it was like, we yeah, had the fancy um, Sizzler. That's why we go on the Sizzler. Oh, Sizzler is the best. Sizzler is oh, the yeah. best too. If we went to 11 o'clock mass, we could go to Sizzler and we never did. So that, that was the thing. Almost like, <laughs> said, honestly, we could go to Sizzler, but we always went to one because everybody was uh, sleep. Lazy. We went to, I think the 10 o'clock mass at and the, Our Lady of Sorrows in McAllen. And then after that, we would go to Best Buy. So I, we went to two churches every weekend. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me get to this. All right. You go to Hollywood, you're there working it. And now for the people who are listening and say, hey, I want to get into Hollywood. You walk into these rooms and you look around and it's like, how did they say your name? Oh yeah. A lot of people will say Jamie, you know, I, a lot of people will just meet me over email 
and uh, they'll think that I'm a you know a woman named Jamie. So when I show up with my you know beard and glasses as a dude, they're like, "Damn, I was hoping, <laughs> that, yeah, I, was hoping I could flirt or something." Um, How do they say your last name? With me. Last name. Uh, Davila. So, um, and they say, you know, they say Davila, Davila, you know, uh, Davila is what what I hear mostly. And again, I'm happy with it. Look, I'm, I get it. I get that my name is not one that like you hear a lot. So I, I'm the type of person like, I don't get offense. Like if someone calls me Jamie and then I say time it, it's okay. Like I've had this conversation because I'm on CBS two on Sundays doing sports and like I've been doing TV for a while, stuff like that. And it's look, they call me Beto because they can't say it. Right. (laughs) And I don't correct it because I've always, I I told you, I've met people where I have an argument that night. They're like, Oh, you're not proud of where you're from. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to argue for how they say my name because my entire life teachers could never say my name because my real name is Umberto. So they just couldn't say it. So I become Umberto, Umber two, whatever, whatever it is. It's like, (laughs) I'm not going to fight how you say my name. Because I'm on TV right now, bro. Like, how about we look <laughs> at the bigger the picture? Yeah, the bigger picture. Exactly. I am the only yeah. Latino on TV right now. Like, how about that part? I've said that many times. It's just no, funny how right. people... And look, I, I hear... I understand that argument, too, right? Yeah, I understand yeah. the argument of, like, if they can pronounce Game of Thrones characters, they can pronounce our names. Yeah, like, they can. I get it. I get it. And they and they should. I'm not saying you shouldn't learn how to pronounce my name. Yeah. I'm just sort of saying, like, I get it. Like, we aren't in a lot of these rooms, right? Yeah. A lot of people in Hollywood you know, don't have that experience, even though LA is 50% uh, Latino, well, whatever, we won't talk about that. But, you know, they don't have that experience. And, you know, I think from my POV, it's like, great, I get to be that ambassador to sort of showcase, like, this is my community. And again, I'm, I, I, I'm very clear on that. Like, I, am, I am represent myself, and there are, our community is so diverse and so distinct. Mm-hmm. But, I, you know, I want to be a small voice that sort of helps Hollywood understand, you know, how unique we are and non-monolithic and distinct and... Um, you know, and yeah, you might pronounce our our names wrong, but you won't do it in the future when you're watching all of our stuff. And you know, I mean, that's the type of thing where it's like, I'm I know um, where the future is, right? I I know the future of media is going to be Betos and Jaime and Juan's and Juan for real all over. Really? Yeah, I do, I do. Because look, I, our our because I okay, I, I'm not going to disagree with you, but it's just no. I'm 42, been in this 20 years, and it's frustrating now and i know as much as people say oh it's changing the landscape this and that and there are because and i'm not gonna say i'm one of the people knocking down doors but i'm cracking up some doors open for people mm-hmm. and i'm trying to help more people come out it's like always oh, send the elevator back down and get more people up that not just latinos but asians blacks females whatever it is you want to do because the more diverse the better and i think for me one of the best things about growing up in la is you see diversity and when you go over the flyover states you're like whoa okay this is a different world this is what Middle America. This is the reason why CBS Two or Murder She Wrote was number one for all those years, and be- because that's who's watching it. But like, I don't need to see another show about a taco shop being saved. It's show me a show about a successful family who happen to be Latinos. I, and it's I've always said it when I've been in rooms that if you just give us quality programming, we're gonna support you no matter what. Because Latino is the most brand loyal. We still have Tide. We still use Downey. <laughs> like, my mom has never changed any of her product because she's been had it for 40 years. But they're most brand loyal. But we're also the biggest cynical ones where it's like, if it sucks, it sucks. Like, we are not exactly. going to support and that. And that's, the, and that's the standard I want for all of us, right? Like, I want to be able to make, like, great shows. And I think that's exactly what you said earlier, Beto. Like, hey, what I want to be able to make are just amazing stories. I want to make an awesome story about an American singer who took over the world and transformed the world. I'm going to tell you another thing about her. She happened to be Mexican-American, had to learn Spanish, and that gives you such amazing, rich layers of like, wow, what a unique, amazing story. But at its core, I'm telling an awesome story about an American family that was ingenious and entrepreneurial and figured out how to make it. How awesome is that, right? Like, that's what the story is about. And I think that's what the Mexican-American or Latino story is all about. We're just trying to make it, right? We're trying to live our lives. And obviously, yeah, we're Mexican. Yeah, we're Latino. But that doesn't define us. Like, I'm not not sitting around my table with my abuelas being like, oh, so, like, you know, Latinidad and all that stuff. We're talking about... (laughs) We're talking about a cheese man, right? We're talking about what, uh-huh. what did she do, you know, last week? And like, she went out with him again. Like, that's, that's what we're talking about, right? And I think that's the, that's what I want. And again, I'm really excited about all the Latino stuff that's out there. It's it, what's great about so much of the yeah. Latino content that's happening right now is that it's nuanced, right? And you get stuff as diverse as Vida to, uh, you know, Love Victor, you know, so much different distinct stuff. And so from my perspective, it's, 
let's celebrate all types of Latino stories. And on this one, I'm really excited because, yeah, it is just it's a family story. And the fact that they're Mexican-American is a big part of it. Don't get me wrong. But I don't want people to lose sight of it, that they're just like every other American yeah. family or just like every other family trying to make it. And so to your first question, you asked me earlier, like, do I do I think um, there's a better future out there? It's like I do, because I think, you know, there's going to be more content out there that's created like Lin-Manuel Miranda exists now. And how, who is he going to be inspiring all these young kids who's inspiring now? Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, for us growing up, it was Edward James almost. It was, you know, it was a lot of people. But I think now there's just so many more. And I just think that to me is how you know that we, we are we are putting, you know, steps on that eventually someone's going to reach the top. And I'm excited about that. Right. And so I'm with you. Like It's slow. I don't know how long it's going to take. Right. Like it, it might take longer than we like. But that that is the future, because I, I see the talent. I see the talent in our community and I see a lot of the people who are willing to work for it. And I think now Hollywood, you know, hopefully Selena works because then Hollywood will be even more likely to be like, yeah, like, let's do more of this. Let's yeah. do more Latino led shows starring Latinos produced by Latinos. Department heads are Latinos. Like we know it can work. The, the I guess the stereotyping is what I've always not bothered by because I was always used to being the only Mexican in the room, but mm-hmm. it's, we go, we do these like at other places I worked. It's like, how do we get more of the Latino audience? <clears throat> yeah. First thing they say, Oh, you speak Spanish. I'm like, dude, no, like it's not, like we are not all soccer fans. We love the Raiders and the Lakers and the Dodgers. Like it, like the Dallas Cowboys and the Steel. You know, like that. It's I eat hamburgers. I also yeah. eat tacos, but yeah. I also I mean, it's like I eat spaghetti, and it's like I'm not all of a sudden having to make something in Italian. I, I got some spaghetti you know I mean? right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I, by the way, I'm having it for dinner tonight. I think yeah. that's how I, my wife sent me a text earlier. And um, but no, I mean it's what I'm saying. Like I I I, I love this is who I am. Like I, yeah. I that's part of the American experience. Is that like yeah, I eat tacos, but I also, and so a hundred percent, man, I think a lot of people are always like, oh, so you're making Mexican content, you're making Latino content, you're doing stuff in Spanish. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, no, I, I'm also doing stuff in English. Cause we, but by the way, I also do stuff in Spanish. Uh, yeah, because if, they I think pay me, the, if they pay me right, I'll do it. No, and by the way, I think one of the cool things about being, and again, this is what I think for our, an opportunity, right? I think one right. of the important things about Selena's story was, hey, look, obviously there's a marketplace in the U.S. But there's a market in the Mexican market that also wants talent. And, you know, if the American market's not ready for it, you yet go to the Mexican market. And I think that's another thing that I tell people, right? Like, hey, you as, as Latinos, as Mexican Americans, as Colombian Americans, as Cuban Americans, we have an advantage that we have that sort of ability, right. right? To sort of tap into various different networks, your family either, you know, so I think for my end, I'm always like, always, you know, d- there's different avenues, I would yeah. say. I, I tell so, kids uh, in journalism, like, you want to go there? Was like, oh, I'll just work in Spanish. I'm like, can you speak like Univision Spanish? Because <laughs> yes, which is real Spanish. Yeah. Be, which is real because you can't say una soda over there. You better be able to <laughs> flow the proper way. Like, I, I when I did a Lakers sideline reporting for a year, I had to get a Spanish tutor to learn Mexican, and I had to use the proper Spanish terms. And I would keep my reports as simple as can be. But I only did it because one, it's the Lakers, and it's the yeah. Lakers Spanish TV is like I'm gonna do that. So it's a different world. Let me ask you this. And by the way, exactly what you said. Like, I, thank you for saying that. I hope, hope your audience knows this, but if they don't, you know, people who watch Univision are not the people necessarily who are watching. No! Say it louder you for know? the people in the back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, Latinos who are watching Univision are not, you know, we're also watching This Is Us. Like, there. and by the way, a lot more Latinos are watching This Is Us because it's like a lot of Latinos don't speak Spanish, right? Yeah. So, so just don't put us in boxes. Like, put, you know, figure out that we're like, we are diverse. We, we are as nuanced as white as you are as the white people get to be and i think that's what i constantly say right like i am so tired of like watching a 45 year old white guy who's done having sex with his wife and then i saw the 46 year old white guy who doesn't like having sex with his wife and then you see the 47 year old white guy it's like (laughs) i just want to see one mexican who has that experience can i just see like you know so i think that's what we're saying right it's like we're already living in this mainstream but like you're not seeing us and so i think that's really what I'm unfortunate and lucky about. Like, you know, that I'm working with projects on ABC, I'm working with Amazon, I'm working with Netflix, and they've given me the opportunity to, you know, to further this idea. And um, it's exciting. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 you're good. Now, this is, forget this has become less of an interview, more of a platica, man. This is like good stuff right here. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm enjoying it because I had all these questions ready to go. And that's another thing for you people uh, who are in journalism school. Just because you have the questions doesn't mean you have to ask them. 100%. Listen and then follow yeah. up. And next thing I know, you've been going all over the place. I do I have to ask this one, though. 
I, about yeah. the, the stereotyping that, hey, yes. this is Mexicans like soccer, right? Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not a big soccer guy. But yes. one of my favorite shows I've ever seen is Club de Cuervos, which was on oh, Netflix, a yeah. right? Because it was the storylines of Aitor and Isabel and, you know, Chava and everything back and forth. And Club de Cuervos is a show that was on Netflix. It ba- first one in Mexico about yep. a soccer team, and I swear it was based on the Lakers. And it turns out that <laughs> no, the uh, the guys who created it yeah, went, yeah. went yeah, to USC. Yeah. So yes. they spent time at USC, and they're watching the dysfunctional family of Jeannie Buss and her brother Jerry. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm-hmm. wait a minute, this is based on the Lakers. And I was one of the biggest like Club de Cuervo guys out there. I was like running it no matter what. So I was like, this is the way to do it right here. No, but, Club de Cuervo is such a great exactly, and I think that's exactly right. Like. You know, what's great about Club de Cuervos was, I'm not a big soccer guy either, actually. So, you know, uh, we share that in common. But I love the characters in the world, right? So I think I would say the same thing for Selena. Maybe you're like in the 0.001% that for some reason doesn't love her music or hasn't heard her music. Don't worry about it. Check out the show. Because the show is still about amazing characters. It's about an amazing young girl who fills a dream. About an amazing mother who has to figure out how to keep her family together. About an amazing dad who has to figure out how to put food on the table and pay off mortgages. I mean... Who doesn't relate to that? That's the story of my family. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not going to assume anybody, but maybe that's the story about your family too. Heck that's yeah, like, everybody. That's, that's what I'm talking about, right? Like when you watch something like Ludo Cuervo, it's like, yeah, sure, it's about the soccer world, but it's really about humans. It's really about yeah. emotions. It's about characters. It's about that family experience. And I think that's, those are the type of shows I, I love to develop, right? So I think you're right. Like I don't like to develop a lot of shows that are – I mean, none of the shows I really develop are stereotyped because – I, I don't agree with the stereotypes about our community. I don't yeah. see them. And, you know, my entire life has been breaking stereotypes, often being the only, you know, white guy, uh, sorry, Mexican guy in a, in a white guy room. And, um, you know, that quickly realizing um, that that was cool, that I could be an infiltrator in a way, right? Yeah. That I could sort of slowly worm my way into sort of uh, making everything more Mexican. And that's the goal, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. A good friend of mine, Fidel Martinez, who uh, runs the social department oh, yeah. for... Uh, oh, you know Fidel? Oh, for the well, LA I, Times? I follow him for LA Times. He just started yeah. the newsletter, right? Yeah, yeah, he started the newsletter for LA Times. He's a kid who's from the Valley, um, Rio Grande Valley, and he went to Yale. But he is oh, Ivy yeah. League. I'm like, so I've met another Valley kid who went to the Ivy League. So it's like, you guys should have your own little society right there. But we got to connect you to that. End. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously. No, nah, no, nah, we don't want him. We don't want him. I'm taking all his shine. Forget it. I'm doing the <laughs> yeah, crabs exactly. in a bucket. I ain't going to hook you up. No, nah, but, yeah, but my question I mean, is uh, all together, yeah. Yeah, you go, let, let's get back into your background a little bit. You go from the Valley to New York and Harvard, where I think Latinos are 4%, if not less. How hard was that for you trying to assimilate? You come from New York City, which is one thing because it's so diverse. Love it. But the Ivy League, the Ivory Tower, especially you thought you were going to go into academia. How hard was that? No, well, you know what? I was very – so I think for me, my big transformation was when I was 10 years old because I I moved from McAllen to New York City. And, you know, when you're in McAllen, everyone's last name is Garza, Gonzalez. I mean, it's just like everyone speaks some Spanish or Spanglish. You move to New York City and oh my God, right? Like all of a sudden, uh, there is there are some people that speak Spanish, but they're Puerto Rican and mm-hmm. they don't, you know, they don't think you're. They, they, it's not the same, right? And you're very clearly early on, it's not the same. And um, it was for me very early on realizing, um, I don't know, like I I was also a smart kid. I also loved comedy. I loved all these other things. So for me, I was very lucky to go to a lot of diverse schools. So I was able to make friends with all types of people. So, you know, I remember uh, our, 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 uh, in, in high school, uh, our group name was PIMP, and it stood for uh, Philippines, Ireland, Mexico, and Peru. So that was sort of our, our group of friends. Um, and, you know, we were all from, our families were all either, you know, first generation or second generation uh, immigrants or third generation even further. Uh, but we all, like, were super close friends. And so when I went to... Harvard, I was, I was very lucky. I went with some of my friends already. So like my friend Pablo, who I went to high school with, who now works at ESPN, uh, Pablo Torre, um, you know, I went to college with Pablo, right? So I already had sort of like a base that I could sort of, people who knew me, so I already sort of felt comfortable, but I get it, right? I, you know, I'll give you the example of my, my cousins. Um, you know, two of them went to Princeton directly from the Valley. Um, and it's hard, right? Like it, it's hard. Um, to go to these worlds directly. Um, and, you know, I will say that, like, I think these universities can do a lot more to sort of help with that, right? I would say that, like, I love Harvard. I think it's a great institution. They could do a little bit more to help with that. 
um, and to help, I think, see what, what I saw there, right? Because, you know, I miss going to college, I, or maybe he was there when I was there. Jared, he was there, I think, when I was there, Jared Kushner. Never met him, though. And, but you, everyone you know who, who met him in college was like, this guy stunk, not that impressive. And so I think that's what I say when you go to these, when you're, if you're a Latino who's going to these Ivy League schools or these elite towers, I just want you to believe something at your core, which took me a long time to understand, but I, I hope you guys all believe, which is true. It's like, you can handle it. You can hang with them. You are just as good as them. You are just as smart as them. And I bet you, you probably work a lot harder. And so, you know, I know all these groups, it's, it's hard, right? I'm not saying it's not hard. Uh, to to try to break in and try to relate to you know people who all went to Ivy League schools and you know who one of my best friends in college her family was on the Mayflower you know and she ultimately married a Mexican guy uh, you know so she's just a white woman uh, and she married a Mexican guy and you know I I think I realized very early in college and in my entire life that you know we as Mexicans we have so much to give to what we I call the fabric that is the American landscape right of all this amazing culture of of TV, music, uh, movies. Um, we have such rich history to get because we've already been a part of it, right? Like Selena, Freddie Fender. Uh, Freddie I mean, like, Fender. Oh man! Like, you know, it's sort of like we're we're already a part of it, right? And so, from my standpoint, it's like, you know, you can hang there. And so, I know it's tough, right? And I'm not saying it's easy, but you know, don't forget that you, as a individual, have the goods, like. You know, if your family came here with nothing and you were able to then go to an Ivy League school, that is so beyond impressive, right? That is so beyond impressive. Like you can achieve anything. And I know the world's going to keep you, and I know it's hard. Right? I'm not saying it's not. Please, 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 please. I know it's so tough. But I just, I think a lot of it's also too is like we don't believe in ourselves a lot oftentimes, right? And, um, you know, what you did for me earlier, Beto, was really cool. Like you hyped me up. And I think that's really key for all of us in our community to do. And so I'll, I'll pay it back to you, to you and your listeners, which is, you know, we can all do it. You know, what I'm doing right now is I have a lot, I have a lot of resources, so I'm very lucky, but you know what? Like we could all do it. And I'm very, I'm very hopeful that I get to work with more and more people to keep making this happen, you know, um, and to keep making Latino stuff. And I would say the other thing too, like I want to have the same opportunities that white people do, which is, you know, they get to make shows that fail and they get to keep making shows. So that's what I also <laughs> want. For our right? Like, I want this for our community too. Like, not every show's like, well, that show didn't work, so you guys don't watch shows. It's like, no, well, like, well, that white show no one watched, and you guys don't make white shows. So, so that's what I'm also hopeful for. Yes. for Somebody for made Paul Blart, Mark Copper, whatever it's called, right? Somebody approved that. Somebody signed off on that. And it's, uh, that was good right there, what you were saying. Hype me up because you can go and make it. Whatever resources you have, it's available. Like, if your family comes from nothing, you can make it happen. At the end of the day, you get to live your dream and satisfy whatever it is you want. And yeah, anybody could take the nine to five and get the golden watch. I mean, it doesn't exist anymore, but you can go the safe route or you could do what Jaime is doing and betting on yourself and just say, hey, it's long play, make an impact and you want to leave a legacy. I, I, that's the important thing too. Um, Jorge Gutierrez, uh, he created uh, Book of Life. Uh, that was the yeah. movie before uh, Coco. And I had him on the podcast and I asked him like, how, how many... How long did this take? I don't know anything about animation. It's like, I've been doing it 20 years of getting rejected before they approved Book of Life. And yes. he had one, uh, he posted it on his Instagram the other day about his storyboard for Book of Life. And one of the notes was, nobody wants to see a movie about dead Mexicans. It was, <laughs> and it ends up being a movie for him. So it doesn't matter what people are telling you, you can't do go and do it uh hi i know you gotta run you're busy you got a lot of stuff to do and you got uh italian tonight too so hopefully it's not from exactly. right? i gotta eat yeah I gotta you gotta eat too. but yeah, um yeah. let me get let me run a couple quick ones at you before we let you go yeah. um best advice you have for somebody who wants to get into hollywood and say they're in college right now i think the best advice i can give you to work in hollywood is either work at an agency or management company because again i think those are the places that often are the locus for you know networks, producers, all of the people have to go through sort of those places. So I think it's a great place to learn about the business. But it's second, if you know you wanna be an agent or manager, if you already know that, like you watch Entourage and you're like, that's not for me, or Ballers, um, look at the shows that you love. Look at the shows that you love and try to figure out who, like we all know the gatekeepers are Netflix and Amazon and all these places, right? Obviously those are the top. Look at the people that Amazon and Netflix are hiring. Look at the people that they are working with a lot and reach out to those people and you know to their websites to their company websites and see what they're working on because oftentimes 
I tell people it's sort of like a way to get through the gatekeepers is to get through like the gatekeepers gatekeepers, right? <laughs> so, you know, I, that's another piece of advice I would have is sort of look, do your research on who's making the shows you like and reach out to those places. You, oftentimes, they're, you know, they're either staffing for productions that they have going on or uh, either for like maybe they have full-time jobs or they're staffing for a, a production that they have going on. So, you know, reach out. And I would say the other thing, too, is there's so many amazing institutions uh, for Latinos, specifically like NALIP or the National Hispanic Community Coalition, of which I'm a board member of, that have fellowship programs. Um, you know, so from my perspective, it's, you know, take advantage of what we have as a community, as a Latino community or whatever community you're in, African-American, Asian-American, um, you know, be a part of that um, and reach out to those resources, too, because they can also be helpful um, in that sense. And there's somebody listening right now. Yeah, Jaime, that's cool and all. You did it, but you went to Harvard. Your dad was an executive. Everything was handed to you. You didn't struggle. You don't know what it's like. You went yeah. to Olive Garden. You went to this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a kid from East L.A. I want to do it, but I'm not connected like you, Jaime. Advice you're, for hey, if you listen to this podcast, you're now connected to me, I would say. And, and look, I, I wasn't connected. I wasn't connected when I Come first got here. You were like, connected. You were connected. That's what everybody says friend, about you. I had a friend. I had a friend who worked at CBS, and he got me an interview uh, at ICM, and I got the job at ICM, right? But it wasn't like my dad called him a favor or anything like. Yeah, right, Jaime. Like, your dad like, made your career, bro. And look, that's why I said a lot of it too. It's I'm not saying. No, that's what that's, dad, I'm saying. That's what the cynics would say. Oh, by the way, I'm no, not I saying say, that. Look, no, but let the cynics say it because like I get it, right? I and I and all I can say is that like. I, I gave up my job. I'm working every day to make sure that Hollywood gives more people like us opportunities, right? So if you're a kid from East LA who feels like you don't have any connections or anything to the world, like Campanario exists. There are so many like people like, I mean, there's no one like me, I guess. No, that's kidding. No, uh, and that's good. There yeah. shouldn't be anybody else yeah. like you because but you're like, forging your own path. But this is the point, right? Like there, there, there are places now that want to help you, right? So like, if you feel like you don't know anyone, like NALIP exists, National Hispanic Media Coalition exists. So you got to write that script. You got to apply for these programs. Like it's not going to come handed to you because it wasn't, even though I have all these connections, it wasn't handed to me, right? So work, work, work. It's really the, I mean, it's awful to say, but that's really the key to it. And again, I, I'm very fortunate that I, had this opportunity and I'm not taking, you know, I, I'm bringing it back to Lin-Manuel, right? I'm not going to throw away my shot, right? Like this is, I've worked super hard to get here. My, it's his entire family. My entire family has worked hard to get here. We're not going to throw away the shot and we're working super hard to give back as much as we can to our community. Right. That's and, awesome. That's um, awesome. and so, yeah, thank you for taking the time to talk with me and, and, and chat. I, I, yeah, I, I feel like I made a new friend here today. Yeah, so we're, we're doing this again. Yeah. Hey, but uh, yeah. how about this last one? If you're in Hollywood, don't complain, right? <laughs> if you're working in Hollywood, I would say, look, I know it's, I, I, if you're working in Hollywood, turn that no into a yes. And I know it's hard, but we can do it together. And let's, let's work together to make it happen. I there you go. Right? Like, yeah. Let's figure it out together. And we're still going to hear a lot of no's, <laughs> right? But, but let's do it together. Let's ha and let's have fun doing it. Whatever, regardless of all this stuff, I think that's the thing too. Like, so much of life, Beto, is like, who knows, right? Like, well, I'm working towards this goal right now. If I achieve it or not, who knows? It's so important that you love the journey, right? Yes. Like, so I love working hard. I love doing the stuff what I do every day. I, it animates me when I get to do it. So, I, you know, that's the thing too. Like, if you're finding that this Hollywood that you don't enjoy it, don't do it. It's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's it, man. This was awesome, Jaime. Um, I, I don't. I'm not a writer. I'm not an actor. But I'm gonna go write a script right now. And, uh, <laughs> yes. I, 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 you, me. you've inspired me to go and become an actor now. So, um, you know, hey, why not? I'm looking I'm, forward to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I ain't doing that. Uh, but no, Jaime, we got to do this again. Uh, maybe after Selena's debut, after the new year, come have come back on. We'll talk about a bunch of other stuff. Because, look, we did an hour and 15. And it, I told you our publicist is only 45. But we came back and we, we didn't even scratch the surface of what it is you've actually gone through, what you've done. And I definitely want to do this again. We've got a new friend. Uh, we're going to figure this out because you have motivated me today and it's i'm always uh, self-motivated and i'm always fired up i'm always ready to go but like just how you said i'm doing this you bet on yourself you're going to make it happen and you just want to be a, a role model and a leader for the community that's what matters bro and i just called you bro sorry about that uh um, no, i've been calling you bro too like i think you're, you're you're my friend now but that's yeah, how that's how comfortable yeah. we got and so the next time you come out we'll talk about pocket squares and you know lapels Water, and all that other yeah. stuff and we'll figure it out so if people want to reach out to you 
Uh, your Twitter is your name, but yep. uh, what other way could people reach out to you? Yeah, if DM me, definitely DM me. And then I would say go on my company website. There's an email there, info on capanario.com that you can reach out to. Um, if you're submitting material, you know, we have to, you have to sign some paperwork and stuff like that. Uh, but we'll, Wait, what do you mean submitting there. material? Like if someone submits like a pilot script or something like that, I can't just like read it. You have to sign something that says you've submitted it to me and you understand. Because oh. like, it happens in, as at Bravo, right? Where people will come to me and like, hey, I pitched you this idea. And that's like, we're literally developing that idea right now, right? So I don't want you to think that like I stole the idea because I did it. Right? Like, I've wait, wait, wait. So, hold on, hold on. Let me get this right. So as a listener right now, I'm, I have a script or I'm, I'm working on a pilot or for something. They can submit it to you. You're willing to open that. I'm willing to look at my wow. someone on my team as well, right? I have I have, some, I have a lot of stuff to read on weekends. No, yeah, so but I'll say the company. Yeah. yeah, the companies with no, no way. we're looking we're looking for great talent, right? And talent can come from anywhere, right? Like my dad was a uh, a kid from uh, born in Reynosa, Mexico, who became the youngest general manager in the history of Procter and Gamble, who ran the Mexico Procter and Gamble office at 25, and he was this kid from Reynosa who grew up with dirt roads, and I don't think anyone would have predicted what my dad could achieve, right? And so I'm sitting here being like, yeah, if you're a guy in East, East LA who, you know, submit it to us, right? Again, I'm not saying, you know, if your script is great, I'm gonna try yeah. to make something happen. If your script isn't great, I'm gonna tell you, right? And it's just gonna be like, it needs more work and here's opportunities that can get you there. Because again, I wanna say something too, like I'm not someone like, I don't have all the time in the world to be like, uh, you know, helping people oh, change yeah, your yeah, script, yeah. make it better and stuff like that. But um, I do want to put you in the right direction, right? So if I can help you, either the National Hispanic Media Coalition can or other producers can, like, so yeah, I, I want to be a resource. So reach out to me on Twitter, reach out to me. Um, I, I, I'm not very active on social media, but I will try, I will probably respond within a day um, and we'll just go from there. Because again, I, I, I do what I would hope That's people awesome. do with for me, which is like, sometimes I need help and I ask for it, right? So right now I'm, I'm asking for everyone's help and like watching something in a series, watching this number fourth and if I'm asking you to do that, I can only repay it by saying I'll help people as they see fit. So, um, again, I understand Hollywood's complicated. Cool. I want to be a helpful resource to people figuring it out. Reach out to me on Twitter. And if I don't know the answer, I'll put you in contact with someone who does. In other words, don't be bringing that weak stuff to my company. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> bring it yeah, finished, bring it polished, and we're ready to go. But the, look, there's it, there it is. He just told you he's your resource. If you have anything you need, you can't say, I don't know how. I don't know this. He just told you. And if you're not inspired after this one, then I don't know what to do for you. But I know that everybody else is. Uh, reach out to Jaime. Jaime, thank you so much. Um, Selena debuts December 4th on Netflix, correct? Yes, correct. Um, so if you watch it, go and tell everybody. Tell the people you like. Tell the people you don't like. Even better. So just tell everybody and then post it on exactly. social media. Uh, Selena will be out there. All that good stuff on Netflix, man. It's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on Living the Dream. And we're doing it again because your dream continues to grow and evolve. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go write a script right now. Uh, <laughs> I, got my, I got my notepad. I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm going to do a script about a guy from Reynosa, Tamaulipas, who ends up running a TV station. <laughs> there you go. He loves spaghetti. He loves, he loves spaghetti. spaghetti. There, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, gracias por todo, man. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll be talking to you soon. Abrazo. As always, thanks for listening to Living the Dream. If you didn't get inspired after today, then... You know what? Unsubscribe from me. I don't need you because this is for some <laughs> people who get motivated. Hi, man. Gracias. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Beto.